Yeah, I mean, I'm impressed, and congratulations, congratulate all of you, yourselves, for coming. Times have changed from when the Hare Krishna movement first began. The, the first temple that I lived in was in Boston. And it wasn't here, it was in Alston. And it was at a time when there, was, there wasn't a BBT yet, it was still one entity, ISKCON. It was ISKCON and ISKCON Press, all under the umbrella of ISKCON. And after some time, for protection of the intellectual property of Srila Prabhupada, you established the Bhaktivedanta Book Trust. But originally, it was right here in Boston. It was a very nice temple. And now it's still a very nice temple. Radha Gopi Balaba were not there at that time. They came, made their presence later. I'm going to begin because I'm late already. I just offer prana mantras to Srila Prabhupada and we'll begin. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Prasadine Nivisesha Sindhavadi Paschachate Zatarine Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gora Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare The Appearance Day of Advaita Acharya. And many of you, I don't know how many of you are really new. Probably some of you are really new and probably some of you are very senior and everything in between. So I'll, I'll try to address each of the three audiences <laughs> this evening. When we recite the Panchatattva Mantra, which we just recited, Sri Krishna Chaitanya in the middle, Sri Advaita next to him on his right, we're in the blue dhoti, and Sri Advaita is next to him on, and you see lit, lit up a little bright, more brightly than the others. Each of those three are in the category of Vishnu Tattva. What does that mean? The tattva means truth or the category of Vishnu. So Lord Chaitanya and his first expansion, Lord Nityananda, and the expansion of his expansion are all in the same tattva or category, Vishnu tattva. And we're going to hear a little bit more about some of the details of Vishnu Tattva, of Advaita Acharya. And going in the other direction, Gadadhar, just like what we see on the altar, Radha Gopi Balaba. So Radha is on this side, the Shakti is on the left side of Shaktiman, or the Lord. So Gadadhar, is a manifestation of the internal potency or like Radha is to Krishna, Sri Gadadha is to Lord Chaitanya. And then Shivas 
is in the jiva tattva category. So we now have it's called, the, the five are called pancha tattva because there's five of them. Pancha means five. And five truths or tattvas or features of the one absolute truth manifest in five features. And Advaita Acharya is one of those five features. <coughs> Here you see a very nice painting of Mahavishnu. This is for the people who've been around for a while because the people that are new, this is like, what's he talking about? So, Vi Maha Vishnu, according to this painting, he's lying in a cloud, and within that cloud, there's Maha Vishnu and the causal ocean upon which Maha Vishnu is reclining, and beyond that cloud, or on the other side of the cloud, is the vastness of the spiritual sky. We'll see it the other way. Within the vastness of the spiritual sky that has innumerable Vaikuntha planets, topmost of which is Krishna Loka, that's on the other side of the cloud. Within the cloud is the cloud of the material energy. The cloud of the material energy is the place where the expansion of an expansion of Krishna is reclining and brings about creation. There are three Vishnu features or forms and they're all in relation to creation. One of them, for example, the Lord of the heart. Within the heart of every living entity, there's a form of Vishnu. And he doesn't only know what's going on inside this body, he's knowing what's going on in all bodies, which is a lot of information. He has a big hard drive. And uh, he, <coughs> as Paramatma, the Lord of the Heart, is directing the material energy. Some of you like reading Bhagavad Gita. Maya dyakshena prakriti suyate sacharacharam that both the moving and the non-moving living entities, the features of their forms being prakriti or material nature, this Lord of the heart, or the form of Vishnu that's within the heart, he is directing the movements of prakriti. That's one of the Vishnu forms. He, this Lord of the heart, is an expansion of the Lord of the universe. The Lord of the Universe is Vishnu, given the name, or known by the name, Garbo Dakshayi Vishnu. So within, you see these universes emanating from the body of Mahavishnu, there's a Garbo Dakshayi Vishnu within every universe, and Mahavishnu is the originator of all those universes. And there's innumerable, innumerable meaning, too many to count. There's a finite number, but too many to count. I mean, if you have a good abacus, you can't count them all. And Mahavishnu has the responsibility, each of the Vishnus have the responsibility or the service of creating universes, creating material existence. To have material existence, you have to have an originator and you have to have the ingredients. It, it, it's likened to making pots. Maybe some of you made pots before. In college, I used to do that. I, don't, I haven't done any pot making in a long time. But there's three ingredients. You need the clay, you need the wheel, and you need a potter. So the 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 Supreme Personality of Godhead manifests in different features to make universes or to, to make pots or any other thing that is made. And the, the one who supplies the ingredients 
Do we have Chaitanya Charitamrita here? I'll, I'll say it, but we'll also read it. There's the, this is for those of you who've been around a while. If you're newer, and this is a little difficult to follow, don't worry about it. But it's just, this is for the ones who've been around for a while. There's the Nimitta Maya and the Upadan Maya. What does that mean? Just as Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, pay attention. What Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna is he wants Arjuna to be his instrument. The, the word that's there, just find the verse. Kant Adi, chapter 6. So, Nimitta Matra Bhavyasa Vyasachin. You've heard the verse? You, those of you that like Bhagavad Gita. Nimitta Matram Bhava Savyasachin. Savyasachin is the name of Arjuna. Savyasachi. Savyasachi. Nimitta matra. Nimitta matra. Become, become my instrument. Become my instrument. So the nimitta cause or nimitta maya is one of the one of the two aspects of Mahavishnu. Let's focus on the, the painting is Mahavishnu, and he's, he's going to do a service. He's going to create universes, plural. And there's two features to what he does. One is the nimitta feature, and the, the other is the upadan feature. The upadan feature is he supplies the ingredients. He supplies the ingredients because prakriti, or material nature, is under his... Mahavishnu's control. He does so, he says, the detailed controlling through his expansion, the Lord in the heart, Paramatma, or um, Shirodakshayi Vishnu. But he oversees everything. That's the nimitta. And then he supplies the ingredients. So according to Chaitanya Charitamrita, who is Advaita Acharya? He's the Upadan aspect of Mahavishnu, or he's Mahavishnu. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita. He's in the Vishnu Tattva category, and specifically, according to Chaitanya Charitamrita, he <coughs> is in charge of that aspect that supplies ingredients or the material cause. It's not like the material cause of a pot is the clay. You don't have pots without clay. You can have clay without pots, but you can't have pots without clay. That's the material cause is the clay for a pot. And, and Mahavishnu is the material cause or the upadan causation principle of material creation. I'm going to read, hopefully, the verses that are shown on the screen here. Mahavishnu is, uh, Mahavishnu creates the entire material world with millions of his parts, energies, and incarnations, just as the external energy consists of two parts, efficient cause, nimitta, and the material cause, upadan. Maya being the efficient cause and pradan being the material cause. Lord Vishnu, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, assumes two forms to create the material world with the efficient and material causes. So, Mahavishnu, this is a detail, but this is, you know, the 201 for those that have been around for a while. This is the feature of who Mahavishnu is in the form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes, Advaita Acharya. He is in charge of, as in this feature as Vishnu, he's in charge of the material causation principle of material creation. And perhaps what is 
most known for him is this feature of bringing about the descent, the advent of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu by calling for him to come. Here's a, some, maybe some of you have been to Jagannath Puri. Here's a photograph of a place, very nice place, in Jagannath Puri called Narendra Sarovar. Sarovar means lake. <coughs> and it's a nice lake. <coughs> and during the time preceding the Jagannath Rathiyatra, there's a big, big festival. There's days and days and days. The, the, the parade itself is a big festival, but there are many Vaishnavas from all over. And during the time of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, those senior most Vaishnavas would engage in water sports, transcendental water sports, not the other kind. And when they were doing their water sports, Advaita Acharya would lie down, floating with his back down and his face up, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu mounted him as if he was Lord Vishnu on top of Anantashesh. And they would float around, performing a pastime-like exhibition of the feature of the two lords. Mahavishnu and Anantashesh. During the life of Advaita Acharya, he was the age of his of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's father. Age of his Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's grandfather. And uh, he, Advaita Acharya, was very learned, even you know, in, in worldly standards. And he saw, according to scripture, the forecast. It wasn't the same as Vyasadeva, who looked ahead and saw the age of Kali is coming. He was in the midst of the age of Kali and saw the deterioration. It says exactly as is described in the Bhagavatam. Manda sumanda matayo manda bhagya hupadrata. Very bad circumstances and getting worse and getting worse. And Advaita Chari was very concerned. Exalted souls are concerned when they see deteriorating conditions. Could you take this bug? So what to do when you see something? The, the modern expression is when you say when you see something, say something. So his was when you see something, do something. And the, 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 because he was such a scholarly person, he began considering, according to the scriptures, what do the scriptures say? Because he felt transcendental emotion. He felt the original personality of Godhead needs to come and set this direction straight because it's headed in a bad direction. So what to do, what to do? He then remembered a certain verse from Gotamiya Tantra, it's on the screen here, quoted in Hari Bhakti Vilas, where it says that Krishna, who is very affectionate toward his devotees, sells himself to a devotee who offers merely a tulsi leaf and a palm full of water. So based on scriptural evidence, he did something. What he did was he sat by the side of the Ganges with his Shalagram Shila, who was Krishna, and he propitiated or appealed to his Shalagram Shila, to Krishna, to please manifest and set this, the, the misdirection of the sage of Kali in the proper direction. That was his appeal. And so with palmfuls of water, just Ganges water, and a Tulsi leaf, this, the painting shows, he was calling loudly for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to appear. Now it is said in Chaitanya Charitamrita, there 
causes for Lord Chaitanya's appearance, the chief of which, Lord Chaitanya says in Chaitanya Charitamrita, was Advaita Charya. Because the Supreme Lord was in the spiritual world, eternal in the spiritual world. And we'll see the verse, Lord Chaitanya said, I heard the loud cries of Advaita Charya appealing for me to come, so I came, the principal cause. And that's an external cause, there's internal causes, but another was the time, according to Yuga Dharma rotation, the time for the advent of the Nama Yagya, the, the chanting of the Holy Name had come. So those, two, those are two external, according to the language of Chaitanya Charitamrita, two re external reasons. The loud calling of Advaita Charya. This is, Lord, this is Lord Chaitanya's words to his devotees. I was in my mystic sleep upon the ocean of milk when I was woken up by the loud calling of Nada, Sri Advaita. My present incarnation is due mainly to him. So, we, we celebrate Advaita Charya's appearance some days before, and later this month, we'll observe on the full moon day, we'll observe the appearance day of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And according to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the, the principal reason was the loud calling of Nada, or Advaita Charya. So he had a very important role to play. Here's an explanation of what this term Nada means. It's, it's found more commonly in Chaitanya Bhagavat, which is another biography of Lord Chaitanya's life, consistently, not sometimes, consistently he's referred to as Nada. So here's Bhaktivinoda Thakur's ex an extract from his writing that explains what this Nada means, what, where it's derived from. He writes, Sriman Mahaprabhu often addressed Srila Advaita Prabhu as Nada. Some Vaishnava scholar, doesn't say plural, just singular, has said that the word Nara refers to Mahavishnu because Nara, the total aggregate of all living entities, is situated within him. Nara has Nara, or all living entities within. During the cosmic annihilation, where do all the living entities go? They go within the body of Mahavishnu. And so Nara, the all living entities, are, are within the body of Nara. Then he writes, the people of Radhadesh, that's where Lord Chaitanya appeared, often use Da, in the place of Ra. So, Nara becomes Nada. Is this the reason that the word Nara has become written as Nada? This meaning is often applicable. He's not saying it, you know, definitively. He's saying it in an interesting way. Another reference is from Sridhar Swami. He writes, Sridhar Swami is a great commentator on the Bhagavatam. The word Nara or Nara or Nada is explained by Sridhar Swami in his Bhavarta Deepika commentary on the Bhagavatam. That he wrote it verse by verse, like Prabhupada did, verse by verse commentary on the Bhagavatam, known by the name Bhavarta Deepika. It's a very celebrated commentary amongst Vaishnava scholars. And the commentary on the particular verse that has to do with Lord Brahma speaking prayers to Krishna, 
Brahma spoke some prayers to Krishna after he stole the calves and coward boys, that whole pastime. Brahma Vimohan Leela. So in his prayers, he's addressing this little cowherd boy, Krishna, as Narayana. And then he says, surely you are Narayana. Here's proof. He gives different proofs. Here's one of those proofs. The word Nara refers to the aggregate of living entities. We heard that just above. And the word Ayana refers to the shelter. You are Narayana himself because you are the supreme shelter of all embodied souls. So let's remember back, well not just remember back, we'll take a look. Here's Lord Chaitanya's words. I was in my mystic sleep while upon the ocean of milk. Where's the ocean of milk? Have you seen an ocean of milk anywhere? There is such a place. And that's the abode of Shira Dakshay Vishnu. Shira is a n nice Sanskrit name for milk. And Shira Dakshay Vishnu, or the feature of the Lord of the Heart, has his spiritual planet in this universe. And he's on a white island, Sweta Dweep. Sweta means white. Dweepa means island. He's, in, he's reclining on an island in the midst of the milk ocean, Shiro Dakshayi Vishnu, on the ocean of milk. So Lord Chaitanya is saying in this verse that I was, I, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, was lying in the ocean of milk, asleep. No, the Lord doesn't sleep, but it's a transcendental pastime. And this is again for the, the 201 group in the audience here. Some of you like reading Prabhupada's books. Many of you like reading Prabhupada's books. And one of the books we like to read is Srimad Bhagavatam. And in Srimad Bhagavatam, there's Canto 1, Chapter 1, and then Chapter 2 and 3. And in Chapter Canto 1, Chapter 1, there's a discussion between Sutta Goswami and the sages of Naimisharanya. And the sages are asking questions of Sutta because he's Sutta, he's very learned, vastly learned. Not only he's vastly learned, but he's just completed hearing the whole Srimad Bhagavatam spoken by Shukadev. He was in the audience. So the sages that weren't in the audience knew that Sutta was in the audience and said, can you, can you tell us what you heard? But they didn't say it quite like that. They, they asked some specific questions. In chapter one of Canto one, there are six questions. One of those six questions is, please describe the forms of the Lord as they appear in this world. There's five other questions, but that's one of them. So Canto one, chapter three is an answer to the response to that one question. Please describe the forms of the Lord as they appear in this world. That's avatars. So the first of the avatars are the Purusha avatars or the Vishnu forms. And there's three. We'll say them one more time. Mahavishnu, Garbhadakshya Vishnu, Shiradakshya Vishnu. And then after describing Shiradakshya Vishnu, Sutta says, there's avatars or forms of the Lord that descend from Shiradakshay Vishnu. That's this verse. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is likening himself to an expansion or a, a, an avatar of Shiradakshay Vishnu, who is lying in the ocean of milk, and heard Advaita Charya call for him, him to appear loudly. So he came, because he responds, as if he's subordinate. It's, it's a pastime. I'm just giving you a, a picture of this, this whole nada term and the place of Advaita Acharya. This is the Shalagram Shila 
that he worshipped by the side of the Ganges River, calling for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to appear. Look at that little Shalagram Shila, it's the cause of Mahaprabhu's appearance. Because the, the way in Vaishnava understanding, Shalagram is Narayana already. And forms of the Lord are manifestations of Narayana. Let, let me go, take you to a, a 301 topic. Ready? The newer people, if you're not understanding all of this, don't worry about it. <laughs> Understand, Narayana is the, is the feature, is a feature of the Lord of Vaikuntha. Lakshmi Narayan reside in Vaikuntha. And uh, part of the reason I'm late is jet lag. And jet lag is from being in India at an Ayurvedic clinic in Kerala. There's good Ayurvedic clinics near, in Kerala. So very near the Ayurvedic clinic where I was, they, there's an old Nishringa temple. But the Nishringa temple, listen carefully, the Nishringa temple, you look at the deity and he's not in Nishringa form. He's in Narayana form. Very ancient deity. Very ancient, very ancient deity. And so what they do, what, he's called the Sankalpa Murti. Well, this is a 301 topic. Sankalpa means intention. So with mantras and with their heart, they worship Narayana in the mood of Nishingadev. And Nishingadev shows his feature of compassion as he did to Prahlad by worshipping of Narayana. Through the medium of Narayana comes the mood of each of the avatars. In this case, in this temple in Kerala, it's the Nishinga temple. So it's known as Nishinga temple. You go inside, you don't see Nishinga deity, you see a Narayana deity. So same back to this image that's on your screen. This is a Shalagram Shila who is Narayana and Narayana was worshipped by Advaita Chari in the mood of appealing for the personality of Godhead to appear in this world. Although he, Advaita Chari, is such an expansion of the personality of Godhead, he wants the original personality of Godhead to come and inaugurate the Yuga Dharma. And so he did. Here's the place where Advaita Charya did his worship. And here's the full moon night. Shortly after Advaita Charya made his call, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared on the Purnima or full moon of this month. And <clears throat> Later in this month, we'll be celebrating Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. After his appearance, Advaita Acharya knew, not everybody knew, but Advaita Acharya knew, and he informed his wife, who is Sita Devi. And Sita Devi came to the place where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mother, Mother Sachi, had given birth, and the place where, Chait where Advaita Acharya lived primarily was in Shantipur, as you see on the screen here. We'll see some photographs of where he lived, Shantipur. It's, it's down the road, uh, you know, some kilometers from the place where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu made his appearance. And when she came, Sita came, the painting is showing She's seeing this is Krishna himself. She didn't say it because she didn't want to disturb the mood of the mother. But she saw and understood this child, the child of Mother Sachi, is that same person that my husband, the Dwaita Acharya, was calling to make his appearance in this world for the purpose of 
establishing the Yuga Dharma. You see, the, con the purpose is to give the connection between all these personalities. And there's some brahmanas in the background and so forth. So he, Advaita Chari, had a great appreciation for who Lochitanya was. Nimai was the name given at his birth. Nimai was given by, by Sachi because the child was born under a neem tree. So the name Nimai, because the neem has different properties when it's good for digestion. The leaves of neem trees are good for digestion. But they're also to protect the longevity of this child because prior to this son, there were a number of sons that had died shortly after their birth. So it was for protection. Advaita Acharya was such a person that he had not only one home, but he had more than one home. You know, people today do that too. So he built a little home. This is the current look of that little home called Advaita Bhavan, and it was very near Srivas Thakur's house. And every day, every day, every day, Advaita Chari would give Srimad Bhagavatam class. And every day, the elder brother of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, or Nimai Pandit, he would come to hear Srimad Bhagavatam class. And he was so absorbed in the Bhagavatam class, because the Bhagavatam class was before breakfast, sometimes his little brother, Nimai, was sent by Sachi, bring your brother, it's time for breakfast. So he grabbed him by the dhoti and pulled him back home to have his breakfast. And after some time, what happens in Vedic culture when a young boy gets to be a certain age, mom and dad start to think, we have to f get him married. So he understood what's up, so he left. He didn't want to get married. He, he took sannyas at a young age. And Mother Sachi then became very upset and she spoke harsh words. She criticized Advaita Acharya because of him, Advaita Acharya. My son has developed so much affection and affinity for Krishna. He left home. Boo on Advaita Acharya. Motherly affection. But it was an offense to Advaita Acharya. And much later, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu caused Mother Sachi to fall at Advaita Acharya's feet, hold his feet, beg his forgiveness for speaking bad words against him. And Advaita Acharya, of course, forgave. He didn't, wasn't holding any bad feelings anyways. And then, Advaita, then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, now, her op the obstacle for her to achieve love for Krishna is removed because Advaita Acharya has given his forgiveness. It's a whole, it's a pastime. I'm going quickly because it takes a long time to tell pastimes and we don't have a lot of time. Even a great personality, the mother of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, had to be forgiven for speaking something bad against a great Vaishnava, Advaita Acharya. After Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted the order of sannyas, there's another exchange with Advaita Acharya. The exchange was that Lord Nityananda, seeing that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in his sannyas ecstasy, didn't even know where he was. He wanted to know which way to Vrindavan. And Vrindavan is <coughs> that way. He said, Vrindavan is that way. <laughs> and that way means Shantipur. Go to Shantipur and take shelter. He didn't say go to Shantipur. He said, that way is Vrindavan. So they ended up in Shantipur, 
And Lord, Ch and Lord Chaitanya said, wait a minute, this isn't Vrindavan, this is Shantipur. He said, that's okay. Let's spend some time with the Dvaita Charya. <laughs> and the, the purpose was for all the devotees in the area where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had grown up for 24 years, drawing their hearts and their lives and their love to come and be with him, including this is a painting of his mother, Sachi. She's depicted in this painting as being a widow because her husband had died. And her elder, she had many sons that had died shortly after birth. Her elder son, Vishwambara, Vishwarup, had taken sannyas, and now her second son has taken sannyas, and she's feeling some emotions about all of that. So she's embracing her son in his sannyas garb. So he, Mother Sachi is Mother Sachi, even for a sannyasi, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So this embrace took place at Shantipur, at the home of Advaita Charya because he invited specifically. As soon as Mahaprabhu appeared, after having taken sannyas, one of the first things he did was he called Mother Sachi, please come. And so there's this wonderful celebration that took place at the home of Advaita Chari. This is a British period painting of the place where Advaita Chari made his residence. And here's a modern photograph of the place. This is the temple area. And around to the left side, we're going to see another area. But in, let's go inside the temple. Inside the temple, no, this is the area around the corner. This is a sitting place where the three Prabhus, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita, they would sit together these are their sitting places. You see the painting on the back wall, and in the front is their sitting places. It's a little space, and they would sit in this little space and make their plans for how to conduct the Sankirtan movement of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu together. So they were scheming, plotting, brainstorming, making their transcendental plans for distributing the holy name and distributing Krishna consciousness to save the land, which was the purpose of the Nam Sankirtan movement of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, assisted by these two lords, Nityananda and Advaita Acharya. This is the Murti of Advaita Acharya during the warm season, and here it is during the colder season. Same Murti, same pictures on either side. And these are the deities that he worshipped. In the very front, you see the Shalagram Shila. And on one side, there's Radha, Madan Gopal. Radha, Madan Gopal. And there's Madan Gopal. And Radha is by his side. These are Advaita Charya's deities. Now, in the course of time, after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had left, Advaita Charya uh, received Diksha from Madhavendra Puri. This is a very nice painting. Madhavendra Puri, some of you are newer. Who is Madhavendra Puri? Madhavendra Puri is a very triple, very, very, very important personality in our line of disciplic succession. He was strict as a sannyasi. At the same time, he had a mood that was very progressive in, in, the, in the mood of a spontaneous devotee. He, had, he exhibited cultured and exhibited spontaneous love for Krishna. The goal of, from Bhagavad Gita, the goal of the Vedas is to know Krishna. Veda is Jasayar Vair Aham Eva Vedyo. But he not only knew Krishna, he knew Krishna in a spontaneous mood. It means 
a mood of the residents of Vrindavan. The mood of the residents of Vrindavan is spontaneous. Regulative devotional practices, which is what we do, regulative devotional practices, in the mood of Madhavendra Puri and the followers of Madhavendra Puri lead one to the mood of the residents of Vrindavan, which isn't just regulative, it's spontaneous. So the seed for that was him, as you see in the painting. And one of the things that he did was he traveled from holy place to holy place, and his practice was he wouldn't eat unless somebody came forward and offered something to him to eat. In today's world, you'd die. <laughs> but in Vedic culture, he wouldn't die if, there's, if it, there he is with his sannyas danda. And they would see a sannyasi and they'd immediately want to offer some alms for the sannyasi, voluntarily. So one time he was in Vrindavan, many of you know the story, and he was seated underneath a tree, just chanting and chanting and chanting. And one village boy came along. It just so happened that village boy was Krishna. But he said, the ladies over there, they've been, they're milking the cows in the evening, and they saw you sitting here, they understood you're probably fasting. They sent me to, to you to bring a pot of milk. So please accept this pot of milk. I have to go back to milking the cows. It's time to go now. I'll come back later and get the pot. Empty milk pot. So, oh, nice exchange. Madhavendra Puri was very grateful that somebody, because he had been fasting for days. And here's some milk. And so he began drinking the milk, and as he was drinking the milk, he was feeling transcendental ecstasy because it wasn't ordinary milk. And then he started putting two and two together, and he came up with four. And said that wasn't just a cowherd boy, that was Krishna himself. And how unfortunate I didn't recognize my Krishna. What do we do? Keep going? Okay. We we'll pretend that I'm not late. So Madhavendra Puri, many things happened with Madhavendra Puri. Many things happened with Madhavendra Puri. One of the things that happened was the deity of Gopal appeared to him in a dream and said, I want to be worshipped by you. And I'm over in the bush because when some soldiers were coming, they hid me and I've been neglected for a long, long time. You've come, I've been waiting for you, please come find me in such and such place in the morning, get some village people to help you and they'll find you. So he found the deity and installed the deity in the wonderful celebration to re revive the worship of the deity. And after some time, the deity then said, the deity said, the deity said, it's really hot. <laughs> and it's gonna get more hot during the summer. Can you bring some camphor and sandalwood and make camphor sandalwood paste and rub it on my body during the hot summer, please? There's an order from the Supreme Lord, Gopal. So he went to get some sandalwood paste. Apparently there was a big storeroom of sandalwood paste and camphor in Puri. He went all the way to Puri to get. And on his way to, to Puri, he passed by Shantipur. And when he passed by Shantipur, he gave Diksha to Advaita Charya. Did you know that? Madhavendra Puri was the Diksha guru of Advaita Charya. Now here's some photographs. There's his deity on the left side. And there's a photograph of Madhavendra Puri because there was the Diksha guru of Advaita Charya. So Advaita Acharya then received this mood of spontaneous love for Krishna 
from Madhavendra Puri, who had a very important role to play in the Hare Krishna movement. At another point in time, Advaita Acharya was residing for some time in Vrindavan. And while he was in Vrindavan, at the base of the temple of Madan Mohan, where the temp- Madan Mohan are being worshipped, uh, he was by the side of a tree called Advaita Vat. And this Advaita Vat, by the side of the tree, he found the Madan Gopal deity that later became the deity that w- w- was worshipped by Sanatana Goswami. Long story. There isn't time for the long story. But it's a celebrated place. So when you visit the Madan Mohan temple in Vrindavan, if you haven't already been there one day, likely you'll get a chance to go. And at the base of that hill, over to the side of the Parikrama path, there's this, this is a photograph of a banyan tree called Advaita Vat in Vrindavan where he found the Madan Mohan deity. And then he went back to to, to Mayapur. So this is a painting, we're almost done. This is a painting of the Panchatattva, same Panchatattva with the Dvaita Charya on our left or Lord Chaitanya's far right. He's elder, he's a grahasta wearing white, he has a nice beard and top knot on his head and that's how he's often depicted. He's a very important personality in the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, whose appearance day we're going to be honoring in a short while, all around the world. Big, big festival, Guru Purnima festival. So I think I'm going to end there so we can get a little bit closer to the schedule that we should be on. This is the deity form in Sri Mayapur of Advaita Charya. Let's say it together. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Pradhanam Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktarinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So there's a little introduction to Advaita Acharya on his appearance day, prior to his appearance day tomorrow. So if you are so inclined, it's nice to fast on the appearance day of these great personalities. Advaita Acharya is one of the special fast days for us, so we invite you, those that have an interest and capacity, in honor of Advaita Acharya. And it's seven minutes after the hour, what to do? Stop or have questions? Any discussion? I see one hand. Do we have a microphone or you have, you have a good voice? I, have a, I, have a, I can speak loud. Okay, go ahead. So I I'll, I'll repeat the question for the people in back. So I always have this question. So I went to Mayapur recently and went to a lot of places, but um, specifically when we went to Srivastava, that's where Mahaprabhu started the kirtans with all the devotees. Yes. Did. Not the Nagar San Kirtan, but inside yes. the kirtan. Yes. So what we hear there is that that was very, actually, it was. It was it was very exclusive that only very qualified devotees could enter there. At that time, yeah. At that time, and then Mahabharata took it out. So then I felt like there was a story of this Brahmana who came and hid in the closet or something. And then yes. So I just felt in that moment that if, like, we have so much, we have so much attachment to Mahaprabhu and, like, desire to chant the holy name with him, I feel like if I was in that position, I would also be kicked out immediately. But then later Mahaprabhu gave his mercy, but how do we sort of, and I've had this similar feeling with other sort of places where I feel like I'm not qualified. Like, I, I aspire to be there, but I'm not, I feel like I'm not qualified. So how That's, do you reconcile that? Oh, yes, you'll, you'll be happy with being in that, in that yeah. uncomfortable space. <laughs> Humility, not feeling qualified, is a good mood. Stay there. <laughs> Don't go to the, yeah, I'm qualified. <laughs> then if you're feeling not qualified, then how do you stay there? 
it is the mood of humility. It's, it's, a, it's a Vaishnava quality. You know, stay with it, grow with it, let it become your mood. And so then if you, do, if you don't leave, but, but you, and you said you stay in the kirtan or whatever, whatever, wherever, it's in the mood of service. That somehow some mercy is, is being given for even unqualified person like me to have some opportunity for service. We'll say it negatively. Beware if that mood of humility disappears. Then there's the mood of entitlement. Whoa, that's one of my soapboxes. So don't get me on that soapbox. Pride and entitlement is very destructive for each of us individually and the Hare Krishna movement collectively. Beware of pride. So get, get, get very comfortable being uncomfortable with the mood, Vaishnava humility. Stay there. And so that you move forward in the mood of service. In, in the mood of service. Someone else? Yes? Thank you very much for the... Like You've got to be loud or I'll have to repeat your question. Maharaj, thank you very much for the... I got that part. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Maharaj, you were speaking of Advaita Acharya getting, uh, taking initiation from Madhavi and Puri. Yeah. So I had a couple questions around that context. So I was, one thing is I was once again confirming when did Advaita Acharya take initiation? That is, first question. that is first question. Second question is it seemed, for, I may be wrong, it seemed as if Advaita Acharya took initiation quite late. And I'm just... Uh, Curious that Advaita Acharya was also responsible for inspiring uh, Vishwaroop to take the devotional service. All Vaishnavas would consider Advaita Acharya as the leader of Vaishnavas. So how come Advaita Acharya didn't take initiation for so late? So that was the second thing. And, okay. Uh, Here's the, the two questions are: When did Advaita Acharya receive Diksha from Madhavendra Puri? Chronologically, when did that happen? Second, why did it happen so late? Now do the second one first. The second one is, <clears throat> Bhaktivinoda Thakur was asked the same question because he, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, didn't take initiation till late. So there wasn't somebody, you know, Leela-wise, there wasn't somebody qualified. Were there, were there eminent Vaishnavas present during Advaita Acharya's time? Yes. Bhaktivinoda Thakur said, I haven't yet found my guru. So, in, in, in the, in, for the purpose of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Leela, for the purpose of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Leela, a very important part of the Leela was not only the Sankirtan, which was cloistered a little bit in the beginning, but then became expanded. But it was also, the Leela was in the mood of the residents of Vrindavan. The mood of the residents of Vrindavan was cultivated and captured by Madhavendra Puri. And so the initiation came later because that's when association with Madhavendra Puri took place. They didn't have a Zoom initiations at that time. <laughs> it was in person. And that's when the in-person meeting occurred. And for Leela purposes, the mood of spontaneous love of the resident of Vrindavan was carried in the heart of Madhavendra Puri and given not only by the, 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 the mantra, Diksha, but the mood of the guru to the disciple. No, I mean, I, I thought you were going to ask the question, wait a minute, Advaita Chari is Vishnu Tattva. Madhavendra Puri is Jiva Tattva. So what's going on here? How is Vishnu Tattva receiving mantra from Jiva Tattva? It's a Leela. And they didn't have a pecking order like that. 
was the mood of the residents of Vrindavan was the, the, the Leela purpose and keep passing that mood on to a Dvaitachari who could then pass it on to others because you can't pass on what you don't have. You have to receive from someone who has that gift to give. And the chronology question, I'm not really clear. It was during Madhavendra Puri's visit on his way to get the, um, the, the, the sandalwood and camphor for his deity. Chron chronologically, when did that occur? Well, it's, it's in relation to Madhavendra Puri's life. It, it, it seems that it was before the appearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but I was pondering on this during the day today. I couldn't find a specific reference that said, it's this, not that, or it's that, it's not this. So I, I can't give a definitive answer exactly when in relation to the, the other events of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's life. I think we'll take one more question. We'll end because of time. Anyone else? If not, we'll end. Oh, here's a question. Yes. Would you share your most fond memory of Prabhupada? Oh, it's not in relation to this class at all. Oh, Advaita Acharya. Sorry. Ask an Advaita Acharya question. Okay, actually, it was Advaita Prabhu that introduced me to Krishna consciousness, Dr. Edmund Bryant. Oh. So it's really special. I'll have to let him know tomorrow. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess I have many questions, but I don't know if I have one for Advaita Acharya. Okay. So I'll let someone else. I'll, I'll, give, I'll answer your question, we'll end. There's many. And you, you know, you, who, what's number one on the, on the hit list of my favorites? I mean, one of the favorites is the first time I met Prabhupada. So, the first time I met Prabhupada was as a college student on campus, I went to, uh, as an undergraduate, I went to the State University of New York at Buffalo. And the reason I went there is I got a full scholarship and so I, I went there for that reason. And I didn't know who Prabhupada, I didn't know what Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna movement, Prabhupada, nothing. I was just walking through the student union one evening, going to the other side of the student union building to go see a friend. And as I was passing through near the exit, there's a Millard Fillmore room, a big hall. And I saw a lot of people gathered around the entrance to that room. So I was curious what's going on in there. Just curiosity. And so I kind of wiggled my way through the crowd at the door and went inside the room. And there was Prabhupada with Allen Ginsberg. Now, many of you don't know who Allen Ginsberg is. You're from India, so you're, you've lost out. You don't, Allen Ginsberg <laughs> was a, an infamous American poet. Infamous for multiple reasons. One is he was a big advocate of LSD. And, you know, that was a kind of, he made him popular because he was an advocate of LSD. And he wrote poetry when he was on LSD trips. So that was another <laughs> infamy. And the style of his writing was stream of consciousness. It was kind of like, there goes Alan. And that's his, that was his poetry. And he would have poetry readings where he was high on LSD and he'd reading his poetry and people were high on LSD listening to his poetry and he was that's the kind of celebrity he was. Allen Ginsberg was on the stage along with Prabhupada because Allen Ginsberg liked chanting Hare Krishna and Prabhupada liked chanting Hare Krishna. So there was Allen Ginsberg playing the bongo drums. 
Pago drums is also you from India. You're lost out because it, it's it was it was a cool thing at the time. There's two two drums, one with the larger head and the other with the smaller head, but they're all facing up, and boom, 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 boom. And you, that's the the rhythm of you know contemporary music people. So Allen Ginsberg was playing bongo drums, and Prabhupada was playing little cartels, and Prabhupada was chanting. And it was an experience. That was my first impression. And when I w walked out of the room, I felt something, and, and you know, verified later. My life had had made a significant turn just by that short association. The, the kirtan went for a long time because people were so intoxicated on whatever it was that they were taking. He didn't speak long. He spoke very short because they didn't have retention capacity. And then he just invited people to go to the temple, to the, they have a little center across the street from the campus and attend Bhagavad Gita class. And that was it, I left. But my life changed from that brief encounter. Just hearing the lips of, from the lips of a pure devotee, the chanting of the holy name directly. It's. Still inside. Okay, so thank you very much, and I've gone way past my time. Thank you for being patient with me. So you just serve the food outside, so, for a lady.